Hi, I'm Eric Gerlach, and this is a talk, a series of talks, about Taoism and its central thinkers and ideas. I have a video before this, please watch, on the simplified early Tao Te Ching, one of the world's classics of wisdom. So Confucius said the central thread throughout his thinking that runs throughout all of it, the one underlying idea that ties all of it together is compassion, being humane to be a better person. The central idea, the central thread throughout the thinking of Lao Tzu, Shuang Tzu, and the other Taoist masters is doing more with less, very much. What the Taoists call non-action, Wu Wei in Chinese, and in Chinese calligraphy you can find many examples. Taoists think you can think by barely thinking, feel by barely feeling, eat by barely eating, talk by barely talking, and interact with others by barely interacting. If we simplify and calm the mind, heart, stomach, and senses, we think, speak, care, and feel less, but also think, speak, care, and feel clearly and easily. So we can do much more with much less with great ease. Taoist teachings and examples show us many ways that don't add up to a single way in words or pictures, which the texts themselves tell us many times, but we can use words and images to point to many things we and others often ignore when we think, feel, and do too much, all at once. We are told in many ways that most, which includes each of us much, do not see what is hidden, but the wise see what most can't with ease, as if anyone can. So let's go over the, main, the central lives and stories of the central Taoist thinkers and a bit about the Tao Te Ching and the central way of Taoism. Then I will follow with several talks about Chuang Tzu and others uh, and the mother of all and holding no rank. So according to tradition and legend, the founder of Taoism, Lao Tzu, whose name simply means old master, Lao and Tzu, Z-I in the current spelling, is, transliteration is master. Also, anything which ends with a Z-I is the text of that master. So the uh, Shuang Tzu is Master Shuang, and the, his text is the Shuang Tzu, the Master Shuang is the text and the thinker. So Lao, Lao Tzu, Master Lao, Old Master, also known as Lao Dan, Lao Dan, Old Dan, lived sometime around 600 BCE or earlier than that and had a reputation for unsurpassed wisdom when Confucius, who lived around, uh, was living around 551 to 479, was just starting down the path of lifelong learning, which he advocates. Taoists claim Confucius went to see Lao Tzu, the archivist of the imperial library, and asked to be his student, but Lao Tzu rejected him, recognizing that Confucius wanted to separate right from wrong rather than see the two as inseparable together as nature. Not only human nature, but all the nature that surrounds us and produces human nature, which Confucius very much wants to distinguish humanity above the birds and the beasts. Much as Aristotle does, uh, Lao Tzu, more like Diogenes, wants uh, humanity to remain amongst the birds and the beast, very much. Taoists claim that Lao Tzu rejects Confucius. The legend says Lao Tzu gives up on not just Confucius, but all of civilization, and he, as China was falling apart into the Warring States period, he rode a water buffalo west to live as a hermit, but as he was about to leave the state, he was recognized by the border guard, Yin Si, with all of these names, an X is pronounced H-S with a S on the end. So Yin Si, who, pronounced, who pleaded with him to leave his teachings for the people before leaving society. Lao Tzu agreed, and in the dirt road, he supposedly wrote the 81 passages, which is 9 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3, usually with systems, them showing they can do math, shows that they are powerful in many ways, uh, all over the world in cultures. That Lao Tzu writes in the dirt road, which much uh, in short calligraphy work, uh, the 81 passages of the Tao Te Ching, must have taken typing long before the Tang, of the Tao Te Ching before disappearing forever. The Tao Te Ching is possibly the most reprinted work of in all of Chinese literature. It is possibly the most reprinted work of philosophy in human history. If we are calling it philosophy, and I very well do, and I don't see why you wouldn't, and if 
uh, what is printed in Chinese and popular in Chinese is quite printed. And if the and the Lao Tzu, uh, the Tao Te Ching, also known as the Lao Tzu, uh, the text of the Master, somewhat questionable, but that is a short and very central classic work, possibly the earliest early central work of Chinese philosophy. It is quite possibly the most reprinted philosophical work in history, including uh, outdoing Plato, the Apology of Socrates, etc. Certainly, it has been printed more than Kant's Critique of Pure Reason. You could print it several, uh, you know, the, several hundred times over in that. While the legend says it was written by Lao Tzu, several discoveries in recent years have shown that the text may have had several authors, such as two copies of the complete Tao Te Ching were discovered in the tomb of Xin uh, Zhui, wife of a local magistrate, discovered in uh, 1973 near Dui, and then 31 of the 81 verses called the Bamboo Lao Tzu. I have a video reciting mostly without commentary that were discovered in 1993 near Guodian. Confusingly, Lao Tzu's name does not appear in either text, so the earliest text should be called the Bam Bamboo Dao De Xing, but scholars thought otherwise, and it is known as the Bamboo Lao Tzu. I have called it the Early Dao De Xing as the title of the video. It is technically the Bamboo Lao Tzu, although it is bamboo slats of the early verses of the Dao De Xing, which may or may not have been the work of Lao Tzu. Could have been possibly the work of three different people. The text shows us which verses and teachings came first, and how the text was adopted over uh, adapted over several generations. The final text was put together by Wang Bi, who lived on the other side of zero uh, from 226 to 249 CE, just after the Han Dynasty collapsed. Wang Bi, who died at only 23 studied the Tao Te Ching, which he believed was the work of Lao Tzu, the Analects of Confucius and other classics, and Wang Bi's version of the Tao Te Ching became the standard for everyone. So he is a editor, if not co-author, uh, of the text. The latter text increasingly refers to the way of things as the one, the cosmos as a whole, and it also increasingly preaches stability and no war rather than less war, a little bit less Robin Hood when you have to, because now we are in times of peace and empire, which reflects the growing environment of empire and stability that rose out of the local warring states. Shuang Tzu, who lived before zero, 370 to 290 BCE, known by his simple name, uh, Master Shuang, was likely from the Sung region, region of ancient China, torn apart by political conflicts from within and conquered repeatedly by neighboring states at war with each other. Shuang Tzu repeatedly suggests that if one takes the long view over many lifetimes, the bad comes with the good, and it is all part of one process and whole. While other Chinese masters suggested the various ways one could structure the state, as Lao Tzu does in places, Shuang Tzu is entirely concerned with liberating the individual in a chaotic and close-minded world. Shuang Tzu may have been the author of the inner seven chapters of the text known by his name, with the other outer chapters written by followers and figures from several Taoist schools who followed the work of Lao Tzu, such as the primitivists, as scholars call them, who taught a very simple life, and the syncretists, who merged Taoism, syncretizing it, matching it together with many other various ideas and practices. Not much is known about Chuang Tzu's life, but it is he is said... But it is said he also gave up on civilization, but rather than ride west, he simply lived in nature, rejecting appeals of officials and others for him to come help them rule their kingdoms. My, one of my favorite passages, Zhuang Tzu is my favorite Chinese philosopher, is he is asked, hey, by someone, come help me rule my kingdom. He says, I, I've, I think a tortoise is happier wriggling around in the mud, don't you, than being a gilded shell in a cage. Now let me wriggle around in the mud out here. The Zhuang Tzu text we have today is the work of Guo Xiang, who died around 312, this side of zero, CE, who lived just after Wang Bi. Guo Xiang collated and commented on the work, rearranged, altered, and deleted parts, and inserted his own understanding into the work, as was common practice. The later Song dynasty, Chan, the no, uh, originally in China, Chan, Chan, known as Zen to most of the rest of us by its Japanese name, the later Zen Buddhist Zong Gao, who lived around 1089 to 1163, 
said, It is always assumed Guo Xiang explained Zhuang Se, but those who know say it is Zhuang Se who explained Guo Xiang. Which is wonderful because if uh, Zhuang Se is the better thinker, he understands Guo Xiang's mind better than Guo Xiang, who's trying to explain the deeper thinker. If Zhuang Se had the deeper understanding, then his words would better explain anything and everything, including Guo Xiang and Guo Xiang's explanations of Zhuang Se. The Shuangzi text does speak of Lao Tzu in several places, which ties these two first and second central Taoist thinkers together, just as it speaks of several other sages and masters, including their teachings together with Shuangzi's. One passage says, When Nan Zheng Chu went to see Lao Tzu for advice, who asked him as he entered, Why have you brought this crowd of people with you? But when Nan Zheng spun around, there was no one behind him. It was all in his it. And Lao Tzu is referring to the attachments and memories Nan Zheng carried with him. Which is a wonderful story to tell depressed people, just to, you know, kick them further downward. The Zhuang Tzu was a major influence on Zen Buddhism, which unlike other Buddhist schools was native to China, where it was originally called Shan and blended with Taoism very much. One of the things to understand, and in the series of talks on Taoism as well as talks on Buddhism, Zen, which I'm going to follow several talks about Zen following Taoism here, and talks on Buddhism and Buddhist logic and Indian logic. You do not understand much of Zen if you don't understand Indian logic and the simple examples they use with hands and clapping, etc., and sound, and you don't understand much of Zen Buddhism if you don't understand Taoism because they are quoting these Taoist texts all the time and screwing with Taoist logic and Indian logic and all of these things. So many koan cases, the sort of puzzle such as what is the sound of one hand clapping of Zen, or does a tree falling in the forest make a sound if no one is around, contain quotes. Some of them contain direct quotes from Shuang Tzu, this second Taoist philosopher. Um, my uh, favorite Zen philosopher, Shuang Tzu, quotes Shuang Tzu, uh, Xiao Xiao, I'm sorry, Xiao Xiao uh, quotes Shuang Tzu several times, and he says, ships cannot sail where the water is too shallow. And also, uh, says, uh, Hui Neng sub uh, plays on the verse, if a dust settles on a mirror, it isn't very bright, uh, which are both quotes of Shuang Tzu. So he is a favorite, he is a central thinker of Taoism, but he is also a favorite author to quote of Zen, central Zen patriarch Buddhists. Lie Tzu, Master Lie, who lived sometime around 350 BCE, sometime between Lao Tzu and Shuang Tzu's thought, is the third patriarch the third most important, even though he lived between the two. He is mentioned as a powerful sage who can travel by riding the wind. Supposedly, you can transmute your body via alchemy into higher elements and ride the wind a la Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, uh, that movie, back in the day. Um, uh, other alchemists, they merely try to turn uh, lead into gold. But so there is alchemy in the Taoist and Chinese tradition of trying to not only transmute the body of the emperor into some kind of immortality, as well as the sages, but uh, th transmuting the body into higher elements such that you can fly or jump for long distances like a Jedi master of sorts who can jump very powerfully, etc. Supposedly Superman similarly flies simply by jumping or something like that. If Superman does exist, does he? So Lietza likely lived between the two, but it has been known in China for some time that much of the Lietza text was written far later, likely between 200 and 300 CE, more around the time of Wang Bi and Guo Xiang at the end, uh, or after the end of the Han Dynasty. During the Han Dynasty, Sima Qian, uh, who lived uh, 145 to 86 BCE, died at 41, tells us in his Shi Ji, the historical chronicle, that court wizards, feng shi, recipe experts, medicine doctors, or distinguished pharmacists, perhaps, I was a pharmaceutical distributor, as said in uh, The Fear of a Black Hat, uh, like the old English word wizard meant something was somebody wizened by experience. Uh, these uh, wizards, or distinguished uh, pharmacists, who serve the emperor and ministers in many ways, hopefully all of them legal, advising affairs of state, ritual, and even expeditions. to uh, They sent expeditions to find Taoist immortals, like Yoda uh, on Dagobah, in remote hiding places of nature, such as secret caves, the sorts of places Taoist alchemists may have invented gunpowder in, before sometimes blowing themselves up. 
Some of these wizards venerated Lao Tzu and the Yellow Emperor and practiced fasting, gymnastics, medicine, alchemy, and tantric practices I would have your parents explain to you when they're old enough to understand it, or bend that way. Rather than any of that, so we're going to turn to the major philosophical teachings of Taoism that are found in the early bamboo Lao Tzu, Wang Bi's Tao Te Ching, and then we will add in more and more of the Shuang Tzu, the Lie Tzu, and other texts and stories. So in this first talk, we are going over the lives of the major thinkers, which we have concluded. Just a quick morsel. And now we will talk about some of the basics of the Tao Te Ching and Central Taoism, and then we will uh, continue to elaborate on the teachings and other thinkers. So first we'll consider the cosmos, the way or Tao of all things, which we are told the wise take as a model and teacher. Second, we'll consider the differences between most people who try hard to stand out and get what they want and the wise who don't try to stand out or get what they want uh, at all. And we will end more with that and the social. Uh, starting with the cosmic through the personal into the social, as we did with the old uh, bamboo Lao Tzu. So in the Tao Te Ching, the original classic, as far as we have it and its adapted uh, verses, chaos, nothingness, stillness, and silence, what isn't, non-being and nothingness, gave birth to form, something stirring and sound, what is, but is and isn't also make all things together, which is confusing. The text goes back and forth between saying that non-being is primary, but then also suggests being and non-being are equal. This is pointed out and it is wondered if there's something gen uh, gendered here, where it is saying all is mother and female, and we will get to that a little more, especially in the next talk, but also that male and female are complementary, and this is sort of more of a dualistic female. It is not clear. It seems to play on that, that non-being is the n lack of distinction between being and non-being, but also is the female lacking distinction, in a sense, between male and female. That does seem to be something played on in the text. So nothingness itself, of course, would not be like absence. If you've ever seen the uh, the movie from back in the day, The Never-Ending Story, again, when The Simpsons, I, this is just like my lawsuit against the ne movie The Never-Ending Story, uh, that in the beginning, the giant mountain man guy, which may or may not be ripped a little bit off the Phantom Tollbooth, says, no, there was nothing. The nothingness is coming, and it's very nihilistic. And he's like, you mean like a hole in the ground? He's like, no, a hole in the ground is something. He's like, no, this is nothing. Like, it's not even a space or an absence. So total non-being would not be space or absence or dark. It would be the lack of any difference between dark or light or absence or presence. So there, this is played on in the text quite a bit. We are told to be like what simply is, which is also chaos, the unchanging formlessness, and isn't that makes all changing forms each thing that is. Nothing, not a single particular thing, can change the way things change. If you want to follow the verses, I have those in my notes on my site. You can't get with it, you can't get away from it, you can't help it, harm it, prize it, nor cheapen it, but it is more valuable and useful than anything. Because the isn't between things is like a fuel for fire, the space that fills with life and doesn't stop. Wang Bi's final arrangement of the Tao Te Ching puts later added verses that emphasize non-being and not being able to judge the whole in one way or another up front, such as he puts as the famous opening, the endless way of all things isn't a particular way, often quoted the Tao that can be named as not the eternal Tao. The endless naming of things can't be particularly named. Always hidden, we see mystery. Always found, we see form. One and the same, but different names. Both are called mysteries. Mysteries within mysteries, the door to all mysteries. We have it's a mystery, the difference between the revealed and the mystery is itself mysterious. A wheel can have many parts, this is verse 11, close to the beginning. A wheel has many parts, but the hole in the center makes it work. Jars are made out of clay, but the space in the center makes it a jar. Doors and windows are for walls, but without these holes, walls can't hold a room. Things are good, but space gets things done. The cosmology text found with the bamboo Lao Tzu, the great one gave birth to water, the Tai Yi Sheng Shui, says the great one, Tai Yi, a title that doesn't appear in the Bamboo Lao Tzu, but is featured up front later in later versions and favored by Wang Bi in the end of the Han. 
can't be named or understood, but we name it and use it whenever we do anything. In ancient thought, names are often used to mean understandings, what we would call concepts or conceptions, such as that naming a thing is heavily associated with understanding it, as we still do. I will not go on and on right now and mention that Wittgenstein would have you ask. So other, other than being competent in talking about apples or naming them, how do you talk out your understanding of apples and how is it organized? You probably don't have much of an idea. We now overuse the word concept to mean a lot. I would say Wittgenstein would caution us not to use the word concept so much all the time for everything. Because a lot of what we do is conscious, but not conceptual in that it is not verbalized or organized in any way. We organize it, not consciously anyway, and subconscious organizing is something that I think Wittgenstein would say we lean too heavily on assuming is deep in there, as if the brain is a computer rather than something more like a stomach or an ape or something like that. But given all of that, and the modern people used to think the, uh, well, the mind in the world was like a steam engine, now people think the mind in the world is like a computer. But in ancient thought, when people use the word name, they often mean something in Greece, India, and China, like concept. And they will say names. We, I have a videos on, please watch the white horse is not a horse argument uh, of Gong Sung Long, Shuang Tzu's, uh, well, Shuang, he is mentioned in the Shuang Tzu, it is Hui Shi, uh, it is Hui Shi who is Shuang Tzu's friend. But this again, they would have talked about the concept of the horse as the name and or group of the horses. And we have modern logicians asking, like Avicenna and other medieval Christian Neoplatonist logicians and Aristotelians, what is the concept and the name? What is naming? Is that conceptualization? And questions like that. So the Taiyi tells us, like sky and earth, name and thing, meaning and form... So you have here name and thing, like this, so my fist is the name, this is the, the thing, the form, meaning, like the name, form, like the fist, mental and physical stand together, the text says. Beyond this, no name or understanding or conception will fit. So the text puns on the name of the name is the understanding of the understanding is the what of the what. And of course, understanding something isn't simply naming it. It does involve naming it, and then it's metonymically it is naming it, etc. There's lots to say here we will not talk about because we're not doing a whole Wittgenstein routine right now. So, many are familiar with the Taoist image of the yin and yang. I did a video on this recently, intertwining female earth energy of darkness and male sky energy of light. However, few know the symbol originally comes from the yin-yang school, one of the schools of the warring states and hundred schools period of Chinese philosophy before the Qin briefly unified China and then the Han took it over and kept it. The Taoists became associated with the symbol of the yin-yang. I often joke you've seen tattooed on white people. Um, it was originally popular with surfers in Hawaii. It would have been some of the first uh, white people to ever get this tattooed possibly on themselves. Beatnik-ish, surfer-ish people. And then others in, Ho in California, Hawaii, uh, were some in the 50s and others with surfer culture and beatniks to get into Taoism a little bit and a bit into Zen. And then we have the hippies and others being into the, all that counterculturally a bit. That is a bit of my neck of the woods and Americana. The, uh, again, more people know the hate Ashbury's in uh, California than know where San Francisco is, I think. And uh, I think some stats said that. And yeah, so the people being into the yin and the yang and the balance, man, that is uh, part of the history around here. So the Taoists actually took the symbol, it is believed now, from the yin-yang school. It is a solar calendar of sorts. Of course, if you do have daylight savings time, that kind of puts a little glitch in the middle of it. But it's important for farmers who are supporting, and especially illiterate farmers, who are of the countryside. And because of that, uh, the yin-yang became associated with Taoist schools of thought. Confucianism is not simply in the city and Taoism in the country, but Confucianism is often associated with the city and Taoism, with artists and other types in the city, but with the countryside uh, in Chinese thought. The manifest, the not hidden, what is revealed, what appears and what is for our senses is the material, the lower, the female, the dark, emotional, and chaotic, according to the Yixing and Yin-Yang cosmology of ancient China. I did not do a video on the Yixing, because that gets interesting. Um, 
and we don't want that. The hidden is what doesn't appear physically and materially, the mental, heavily associated with words, names, and concepts, what we can't see or hear, but is beneath or above material appearances. Again, is and isn't seem mixed up as far as we can judge things, such that the material, chaotic, and emotional are primary and basic, but also that chaos and emo order, emotion and reason, the material and mental work together. The bamboo lautsa says, the whole isn't anything in particular. The whole, the sum, the cosmos is not particularly green or not green or 13 or not 13 of anything. Many, like travelers, stop for prized goods like food and music, but talking about the way lacks any flavor in the mouth because there is too much of it to see, too much of it to hear, and too much of it to use up. We look at what is, but can't understand it. Listen to it, but can't hear it. Undefined and unimaginable. Meet it and can't see its face as it appears and as it begins. Follow it and can't see its back. And there's another similar pun with the language. As it truly is, its back, how you see it from, the, from its revealed side, but also as it ends, as in the back of it, the end of it. You can't see the beginning of it, of reality, the end of it. You can't see how it simply appears. You can't see how it truly uh, inward is, the manifest and the hidden circling around in each other. Well, that is the first of these talks. I will upload this, and then I am going to do a talk on the mother of all, a bit about some striking things that Taoism tends to put the female in the primary position, and we'll talk about some of the early verses of the Tao and several of the other stories of Taoism that appear, and then we will talk about opposite perspectives in the Shuangzi and follow uh, with how to not try too hard, and then holding no rank, and a little bit of Taoist early anarchism, because the Taoists are sometimes called a bit anarchistic, a little bit Robin Hood, and we'll have some stories in the Immortals woven in there, inclu including Lu and Han, who are sus suspiciously, strangely close to the names Luke and Han, and they are, you know, they are wrapped up with people, people who are Yoda-like. So what have you. Apparently people are watching things in film school, not sure. So, have a wonderful night, everybody, or a day, rather, whatever time or place you're in. And please watch my other videos on Indian, Chinese, Greek philosophy, modern philosophy, etc. And I will see you when I see this camera next.